Hi guys, it is a blissfully rainy day in the drought plagued wasteland of South Austin, Texas. So I'm coming at you today from my big trash bark lounge or set of my rock. Uh, I just finished my weekly roundup, uh, basically stories of just about how this planet is going directly to hell in a handbag. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking economically, I'm, I'm talking ecologically. Just further evidence uh, about how this is happening. And one of the stories in my roundup that, uh, that came up in my survey, as I mentioned in my fuller rant, was uh, this story. Uh, from what is this journal? This is from Trends in Ecology and Evolution, and which is saying that warnings of global ecological tipping points may be overstated. So this I will take. This is a direct challenge. To, uh, the planet eaters that you're not eating enough of this planet nanny nanny boo boo nanny nanny boo boo as hard as you're trying uh, you have not pushed this planet into any sort of global tipping point this will probably be the only time Alex Jones will will ever highlight a story from a publication called trends in ecology uh, Alex Jones will be cheering this one on. Okay, let's see what trends in ecology and evolution has to say about this. There is little evidence that the Earth is nearing a global ecological tipping point. All right. As, uh, as I mentioned, they, I'm just going to, this first paragraph I already read in my last rant, but for those of you who missed it, you know, talking about in a paper that is bound to be controversial, and as I said then, a controversial my ass. It's gonna, it's gonna be no controversy on this planet. Just 99.9% .9 of the planet has no interest in the fact uh, of whether this planet is going uh, to hell in a handbasket or not. But anyway, as to repeat, uh, then I'll get deeper into this. The, are, the authors argue that despite numerous warnings that the Earth is headed towards an ecological tipping point due to environmental stressors such as climate change, blah, 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 it is unlikely that this will occur anytime soon, at least not on land. Uh, the paper comes with a number of caveats, including that a global tipping point could occur in marine ecosystems due to ocean acidification from burning fossil fuels. In addition, regional tipping points such as the Arctic ice melt or the Amazon rainforest drying out are still of great concern. Okay, and, and so now from here, here is the literally the rest uh, of this story which is not going to be so much controversial is just setting back the calls of, uh, of doomsday profit and an environmental alarmist and anybody with brains but what the hell guys is giving me license to go back to my real estate career okay according to the lead author Barry Brook quote when others have said that a planetary critical transition is possible or likely, they have done so without any underlying model or past present examples apart from things like catastrophic drivers like asteroid strikes. This is Barry Brook, the lead author. Uh, it is just speculation, and we have argued that this conjecture is not logically grounded. No one has found the opposite of what we have suggested. They have just proposed it. He's already losing me. Anyway, what the hell does gobbledygook means? 
uh, according to Brooke and his team, a truly global tipping point must include, to be considered a global tipping point, it must include an impact large enough to spread across the entire planet, hitting various continents in addition to causing some uniform response. Guys, in, in case you have missed the, uh, the impact that has gone truly global, an impact large enough to spread across the entire world, hitting various continents, I would say you look in the mirror. You look in the mirror to see the that impact. It is called asteroid Homo sapiens sapiens. Clearly, clearly meets that definition. Uh, the the hang up here is that it needs to cause a globally uniform response. Quote, these criteria are very unlikely to be met in the real world, according to Brooke. Okay. The idea of such a global tipping point comes from ecological research, which has shown that some ecosystems will flip to a new state after becoming heavily degraded. Yeah, for instance, the state from tropical rainforest to desert. But Brooke and his team say that tipping points in individual ecosystems should not be conflated, love that name, conflated with impacts across the entire Earth as a whole. Even climate change, which some scientists might consider to be the ultimate global tipping point, does not fit this definition, according to the paper. Uh, impacts from climate change, while global in scope, will not be uniform in scope, and therefore, and hence, are not a, do not meet the definition of global tipping point. Okay, back to the author. Uh, local and regional ecosystems vary considerably in their response to climate change, and their regime shifts are therefore likely to vary considerably across the terrestrial biosphere, meaning across uh, the land-based biosphere. Uh, so from a planetary perspective, this diversity in ecosystem responses creates an essentially gradual pattern of change without any identifiable tipping points. The paper further argues that biodiversity loss on land may not have the large-scale impacts that some ecologists argue since invasive species could potentially take the role of vanishing ones. All right! So, uh, you know, as we eliminate uh, more and more and more and more and more and more, of, of species off this globe. Who cares about that? The, the, the invasive species, the rats, and uh, looking out this window, uh, the, the legustrum, and all of these invasive species, they will just fill the niches. They'll just fill the niches. So who cares? Uh... Anyway, guys, uh, I, I, I will put uh, I, I will put the link to this to this absurd article uh, 
Of course, ecologists still know little about the many ecological roles single species may play, and, and other research has shown that losing even one key species can have a major in impact. Like, like, how are you going to replace elephants, for instance, as I've been talking about? Okay. Despite arguing that global tipping points are unlikely, there is one current environmental issue the authors say may fit the definition of an earthwide tipping point, only it would occur across the oceans, not land, and this is ocean acidification. Quote, coral reef ecosystems appear to have disappeared global, globally, simultaneously, and suddenly, likely driven by global increases in ocean acidity and temperature in response to massive geological CO2 releases to the atmosphere, the scientists write. Although less widely known than climate change, ocean acidification is also caused by rising CO2 emissions uh, and carbon dioxide changes the chemistry of oceans, reducing pH levels and imperiling the world's coral reefs along with crustaceans, mollusks, and plankton. The loss of such biodiversity could trigger a mass extinction event across the entire marine ecosystem. Uh, so there you go. And I'll put the link to this story. You can draw your own conclusions whether or not you believe this planet is going to hell in a handbasket. You know my vote. This planet has already, has already passed a global, an ecological global tipping point on, uh, on sea and land. And we ain't coming out of it. So despite uh, the temptation to go back to my $100,000 a year uh, life as a real estate investor and real estate agent, I will be coming back at you, whether from my big trash bark lounge or from, or from my rock, me and my usual ornery, what am I? A doomsday prophet, an eco logic and environmental alarmist and the chronicler of the downfall of civilization. But for now I'll close up these three rants for on this rainy day and figure out what I'm gonna do with myself. Bye guys.